Welcome to The Fickle Folk, a podcast about the personal histories of ever-changing folk songs. I'm Elizabeth, and this is my helpful husband, Ross. Hi. And today we're going to be talking about one of the death-inspired children's party games, but not the one you're probably thinking of. What? What? What other party games are death-inspired? Well, uh, Ring, Ring Around, around the, the Rosie. Rosie. Uh, what about the one where the baby falls out of the tree? Yeah, you'd be surprised, right? I don't sing those. Five minutes and you'll think of a bunch I'm, more death-inspired children's songs. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> now, if the title of today's podcast didn't give it away already, we are talking about a folk song called Green Gravels. Um, but before we really get into the song, Ross, could you give us a little bit of a history of what folk music is? Do you want the a history about folk music? Yeah, not even just a history, more of like a, an overview. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to try not, not to get too cerebral about this because classifying folk music as it would pertain to like being different to other forms of music is kind of hard. Okay. Um, so just generally, one of the schools of thought that you can use to classify music um, puts music into three different uh, categories. You've got uh, folk music and you've got popular music and you have art music. So super fast and dirty art music requires a really high level of skill and is made for the purposes of sort of artistic boundary pushing and popular music generally is made for money it's commercial music and then you've got folk music which is just music that people play for themselves and because it's music that people play for themselves it gets re really um regional and idiosyncratic which is why it takes anthropology essentially to go around and record, okay, how is this music different? Why is it different? Where did it come from? Th one way to think about folk music is people fooling around on the porch. Whatever version of the porch you have, if you're on a Tibetan terrace or you're in some sort of, uh, just whatever your porch is, whatever your front room is, and you're making music to pass the time, uh, that's generally folk music. Maybe the bigger chunk of what folk music is, is just organic children's songs passed down from playground to playground, uh, as it were. Right, yeah. And you know, we have a really good example of that. We had uh, Alice sing an example of Green Gravels, and she picked it up. I taught her in, in yeah. about 10 minutes. Yeah, the, you should listen to this, uh, this sample. It sounds really great. Okay, let's hear it. Green gravels, green gravels, the grass is so green. All over creation, I'm ashamed to be seen. Dear Odie, dear Odie, your true lover's dead. He wrote you a letter to turn back your head. Isn't she sweet? She's so sweet. I can see how that would be a popular song in some areas to sing. The da 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 da, -da is yeah, they'd be doing on their own anyway. Um, yeah, I agree. The da -da -da -da. And then they've got a fun leap in there too. I'm ashamed yep. to be seen. It's from a uh, from a purely educational standpoint, from a music teacher's perspective. This is a great song because it teaches the kids to go slow, which is really, really hard. And it's got those leaps in it uh, of really important intervals. Um, so let me describe to you really quickly the dance that goes along with this song. So all the kids are in a circle holding hands and they're walking really slowly. And then one at a time, as their names are called, they turn and walk backwards. And that's basically the whole dance. It's like a very somber funerary hokey pokey. It, yeah, it kind of is. So let me give you a little bit of a background on some of the versions of this song. Um, Green Gravels was composed around 1790s 
in Ireland or Scotland, but it's been all over the world. It's been in Britain, Canada, New Zealand, the U.S., mainly in the Ozarks. And in the U.S., it's a party game. But according to one, like, 90-year-old woman who was interviewed about the games of her youth, she said that it wasn't very popular because it called for little energy or imagination. <laughs> I don't like seeing this song. Can we play Pin the Tail on the Donkey? Right, exactly. Pin the Corn on the Pone? <laughs> right. One folk song collector thought that it might have been composed by Irish Catholics as an attack on Freemasonry. Yes. And um, some versions talk about it's the girl who's dead, and in some versions it's her boyfriend who's dead. Um, In some British versions, the game is followed by another game in which the ghost of the lost lover comes back. (gasps) A twist. And appears in the middle of the circle. And the dancers who've all turned around are made to like face the ghost one at a time. In another version, um, it's the, all of the girls who are dead and buried. And, um, because all of these pretty girls are buried, the green is brighter in this area. Um, and, (laughs) oh, that's some, that's some bright moss. I'll bet some hotties are under there. (laughs) Moldering hotties. (laughs) But back to the topic. Uh No. Okay. Um, So some versions of the song in which the girls are the ones who are dead, they have been washed in milk and wound up in a sheet of silk. And then their names were like written in maybe like the family Bible with a glass pen that would never rust. Um, So there, yeah, there are so many different versions of this sad, weird little song But what's really interesting is the way modern children react to this song because it's being used in classrooms all over the world. So I reached out to some of my colleagues uh, from when I was a choir teacher and some of the experiences they shared with their kids that they did this uh, Green Gravel song with were really, really sweet. This teacher says, uh, I used this song with third and fourth grade students, and we talked about how people felt when loved ones died, and how singing was one of the ways that people process information, and how kids sing songs and play games to help themselves feel better, and without exception, they were deeply moved, and they requested it years after. I'm all for children learning about, uh, learning about hard topics and difficult emotions and experiences and processing that through song and art. I think that's a great thing. For this particular song, though, I don't think anything is clear enough. It's just kind of sad and sort of a lame game. I, I don't it's, know. It's catchy, though. Like when, when uh, well, Alice's recording yeah. was like, oh, that's, that's sweet. Yeah. But... Yeah, I think it has to be in an in-person context. If you put it in a movie, it's going to be a horror scene. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you that it would be boring to watch. Um, participating in it seems to be a different sort of thing, though. It's moving to the music at such a slow pace and holding hands with the people next to you. And it's sort of like they're all experiencing this sense of mourning together in a play sort of a situation which kids do all the time i mean you've heard our kids some of their games are so creepy yeah and it's always life or death right yeah stakes are not low in kids games yeah so the kingdom is always in peril right it is And on that note, I think we'll wrap this episode up, and we hope to see you next time on The Fickle Folk. Music for this episode of The Fickle Folk was provided by the Water Tower Bucket Boys and by our daughter, Alice. 